Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Jasmine Pather here. Today we're going to be covering the rental agreement that we provide to each of our PBI family members when you buy a booth from us. And this is helpful so that we can go through each section of the contract together and I can kind of give you a brief overview of why we believe that that section is important for you to provide to your client. So to start here, we do provide this inside of PBI United, which is our training platform that all of our new uh, customers get access to. So if you are already a customer and you didn't know that you had access to this, make sure to go to pbiunited.com and log in. And this is inside the quick start um, course that you'll be able to access this information. It is in a doc format, so you are able to make edits according to your business needs. So just keep that in mind. Um, as you can see here at the top, we uh, have a little um, note there that tries to push the, the client to complete their contract as soon as they get it. Sometimes, uh, especially if you have an event that's um, you know coming up pretty soon, you want that information that you're requesting in here and you want to make sure that you have all your documents in line so that you can go work the event without a problem. So that's why we have that up there. You can remove it, you can keep it if uh, you choose to do so. Um, the top portion, portion of the contract is just kind of all of the legal uh, standard items. So noting that uh, your company you know, is going to provide a service for such and such clients for John Doe on September 6th, 2020. And so it, this con the purpose of this contract is to have something um, hard copy to go back to in case there's any confusion in case there's um you know any 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 complaint that the customer has as far as what you were go going to provide or the time and date that you said you were going to provide this is something you can fall back on and provide to the customer so that there's no misunderstandings and everyone's on the same page so um as you can see here you have <clears throat> You have a section where you can actually provide the time frame that you'll actually be operational. And so you want to make sure that that's 100% accurate. And then you want to make note of when your client can actually expect you to show up to work the event or to set up for the event. And that way um, that's clear and they're not anticipating you or calling you two hours or an hour and a half before you're actually supposed to start your event. Um, as you can see here, we had a note that if the client wanted us to set up um, a lot earlier than what they wanted that's listed here in the contract, we actually charged for idle time. So this happened very rarely. Most of the time, um, the clients are fine with you setting up at the time that you say you're going to set up. And then we also had a note here that um, due to any minor like uh, technical issues, so that be um, changing the paper and ink or adjusting camera, things like that, then, you know, the service might be operational for a minimum of 90%. And this is just something that protects you. And that way, if you have a very um, nitpicky customer, then you have that to fall back on. The, the next portion here is payment. So this is something that's going to be uh, of, according to your business, according to what you're, you'll feel comfortable with. What we used to do was charge $100 for a deposit and that would get the customer on the booking calendar and that would lock everything in. And we would request the balance due to be paid seven days prior uh, the event. And in some cases, even sooner, just kind of depending on the type of client. So um, we also made note here that um, if we were to go over the mention time within the agreement, um, then we have the right to charge 150 an hour or um, an additional hour. So you can change that price according to what you're currently charging your customers per hour. That just means, you know, if they're making a last minute request, it's changing your schedule. And if you're able to accommodate that, then um, you're charging them a higher premium for that. And there's just a note there about return checks. And then you want to have a section on 
date changes and cancellations. So this is where you'll be able to tell your client how you handle this, um, especially if it comes down to weather. As you can see, weather changes must be made 24 hours in advance. And any requests for a date change, um, we request it at least seven days in advance. Um, you can tweak it according to what you feel comfortable with. And then um, we actually make, made a note here that if their request, their new requested date is not available, we'll keep the deposit, but we will give them the rest of the money back. The next few portions here are pretty standard in any rental contract or service agreement. As you can see, there's damage to provider's equipment. So it's just letting the customer know that if, if anything happens during the event, they're responsible. So this could cover like a really expensive prop or anything that you brought to add to the experience. If their guests damaged it, then you have the right to uh, ask the host to replace the item or give you money back because uh, the customers or the the uh, attendees of the event fail to take proper care of your items. And then here, indemnification, that's pretty standard uh, for a service agreement as well. There's also a section here for um, limitation of liability, just kind of protecting um, yourself in, in both of these sections here. Uh, indemnification, I believe, just means one party will compensate another party. And so as you can see, uh, the client will indemnify provider against any and all liability related to the client's event during or after the client's event. This kind of meaning um, they would be responsible if something happened during the, the event. Um, and then as you can see here, we have a section on limitation of liability and this is just to protect your company here and you would just edit your company name in those sections there and there is a section here for model release as you, as you can imagine as a business owner it's very it's very uh, fun to just put, want to post all of the pictures from the event but we have to respect people's privacy. And so um, as you can see here, there's a section where the host can select whether or not that, you know, we have the right to use the photos from the event for our marketing purposes. And let's see here. Um, and then this is just some more legal, legal text here. Uh, if, if things got out of hand, the client agrees to solve any arguments via arbitration. So it's just all things to protect you and your business, but also the customer as well. Um, so the, the client would just sign this and date it, and then you would sign it there and make sure you, your date is correct. Now, the next few portions of the contract, I believe are the most important because these are what are going to help you have a really smooth event the day of and it's going to help you prepare ahead of time and not have to go back and forth with the customer. And because it's all documented and the customer is providing it, then, you know, they can't come back and say that that wasn't what you, what, what was agreed upon. So as you can see here, this is where the customer will actually provide all of their, um, their information. And then below that, there's a section for venue information. Now, this is the, the information for the person that is booking the event. So um, if it's a wedding coordinator, she would put her name here, um, her business address or her billing address, city, state, zip, all of that information. And then she would know what type of event it is. And then here is the venue information. So this is going to be um, who your point of contact will be at the venue once you arrive. Who do you need to talk to about where to set up? Or who do you need to introduce yourself to and let them know that you've arrived and you're setting up? And then you also want the name of the venue, the correct address, the full address, and then a contact number for the person that's going to be helping you the day of. So that information there is important. Let's say that you get lost or your phone loses signal and you're working an event that's kind of out of range. 
um, you want to have um, information ahead of time that's going to help you make sure that you arrive on time and that you're able to work your event just fine. So parking and loading, that's also important in my opinion because there's times when you're setting up in really odd places or you're setting up in very populated areas like downtown, here in downtown Dallas, there's a lot of one-way streets and, and parking is very like, you know, difficult. And so if they have specific parking and loading information, that's going to make your process easier. You have to make sure to get that. And it's imperative in my opinion. It saved us so much time. Uh, if you don't have that proper information, it, there's a high chance that you'll set up late and your customer won't be very happy with you. Um, below that, you'll see layout and photo booth uh, templates. And you'll be able to um, have the customer pick what type of template. So uh, one and four are photo strips and then two and three are like four by six. These of course can be customized to however your software allows you to do the templates. But uh, whenever whenever we, we were working these events, we found that it was either customers either wanted photo strips or four by six. And these were kind of the most popular, even though there was probably like a hundred different templates. But we just felt like the less that you can give them, the, le the easier it is for the customer to pick. Sometimes if you have too many options, then they don't know what to pick. So as you can see here, we charged extra for the four by six. So that's something that you can um, also consider. Uh, so that way you're covering the cost of your extra media and your ink. And then we asked them for specifics on their design. So we asked them what they wanted the photo to say or the printout to say. We asked them if they had a theme or what colors that they would like the text to be. And so we also had a little clause in there that they only got two revisions per custom design. Um, this is more so for one out of a hundred people that would want 10 revisions on, on one design. So uh, that's just there for that purpose. And then the next portion here that we provide is uh, break down a, a section where you can actually break down all of the services that you are providing, how many hours you agreed on, what the total price is, and then again, another opportunity for you to reiterate the date and time or the customer to re relate the date and time that they want the photo booth service. And then the rest of the portion here is just going to be math, adding up your sales tax and making sure that you know how much they paid to, for their deposit and how much their balance will be, you know, seven days before their event. Uh, we we never really had um, any issues with any of that there. And then you have a section where you actually can uh, let the client know what your requirements will be for the photo booth as far as uh, power and space. And so for us, we had certain um, certain booths that required at least seven feet um, in height clearance. And then we may note that the client was the one responsible for providing power and making sure that we had an available outlet. And then we also offered a, a Wi-Fi service for those that wanted the uh, text to phone feature. And if they didn't have Wi-Fi at the venue, we could um, upcharge them for $50 and bring our own hotspot. And then again, um, making another note here about the setup. So letting the customer know that if they fail to provide parking, proper parking and loading information, then that could possibly cut into the service time of the photo booth. So again, we never actually had like the situation happen it's just more so there so that the customer feels uh you know obliged to provide that proper information so that you know of course they want you to set up on time and then um provide information on your payment where can they send the payment and then what's what information do you need from them if they are tax exempt company 
And then again, reiterating that the balance is due one week prior and letting this little clause here, we will not start designing your layout until the final payment is made. Um, again, another way of kind of pushing the customer to give you that information. Um, people have a lot of things going on, especially if they're planning a wedding or a huge birthday party. So sometimes it's easy for them to miss the email and they might take longer to get back to you. So all of these uh, sentences in here are just a way to kind of, you know, get them to get you what you need. Okay, another important part in the contract that we felt was needed was making note that we are not responsible for the location of the photo booth. Their point of contact will need to tell us where the booth should be located and should they not be available or not tell us where, then, you know, as the photo booth attendant, you have the right to pick where the photo booth will go. And then um, kids, you know, uh, there's some events where the kids want to be the sole focus of the photo booth. And so we had this part in here so that we didn't have any, any pushback on this, but we didn't allow kids in the booth without adult supervision. So there were times when we would maybe let them get away with one or two pictures. But after, after you kind of notice, okay, they're going to keep coming back and they're just going to run through all my media. Uh, we, are, we kindly just would tell them, Hey, you need to come back with your parents. And that would really help with that situation. Um, and so you just have the customer initial those sections there to acknowledge. And then we had um, information here regarding outdoor setups. If you're not doing outdoor events, then you don't have to worry about this. But we also had notes about um, power. So if the venue or the outdoor venue didn't have a power source that we could connect to, um, we actually required that the customer pay $100 for us to bring out our own generator. And this ensured that we didn't have anything trip. Um, oftentimes they'll try to connect you to another generator that's already powering a bounce house or the DJ or just something else, a margarita machine. And so you want to prevent uh, any tripping from happening and you want to protect your equipment. So this is something that you can do later down the line if you're doing a lot of events outdoors, it makes sense to do it. And then we actually required the customer, we requested the customer to provide us with credit card information before um, with while they're signing the contract. And this would allow us to automatically charge their cards seven days before the event. Um, there were times when the card number was wrong or where the credit card had expired. And so at that point, we would reach out via phone and get that information and make sure to charge it. But this is another great way of just saving time and saving uh, the hassle from going back and forth. And this ensures that they're committed, that they're committed to the service that you uh, that they booked you for and that they will be paying you before the event. Um, this just makes it a lot easier, especially um, I've heard a lot of horror stories of people working events before they get paid and then they never got paid. Um, so you just want to make sure to protect your business in that sense. And then we did have this section here uh, where customers could um, go ahead and add on a tip beforehand. A lot of our corporate clients would add on the tip beforehand. And some would just say that they prefer to wait until the day of, which is totally normal and fine. Um, but yeah, that's the contract. All in all, again, it's, it's something that you want to make sure that you get every single time for every single one of your events because at the end of the day it's going to protect you and as you can see we used it to not only clearly identify the date time and what the client can expect from us as a company but we also wanted them to um, just be able to provide all of the necessary information that we would need as a company to make sure that all of our ducks were in a row and that we could perform the services according to what the client wanted in a timely fashion and not create too much chaos or too much stress the day of. And so once you get this document, it changes everything. It makes so much, it makes things so much easier. It helps you organize better. 
uh, prepare ahead of time. It helps you get that payment ahead of time and it helps to set that expectation. And also the customers, it answers a lot of the customers' questions that they might have. And so it just saves time through and through. And so if you don't have a contract, there are you know websites that you can get one drawn up. And if you are already a PBI family member, remember that you have access to this contract inside of PBI United. And so if you are having um, issues logging in to get access to this, let us know, send us an email and we'll take care of you. But yeah, guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions or any other suggestions for our next photo booth uh, or our next photo booth international video, please leave it in the comments below and let me know if any of this was helpful. Um, I hope that you guys are staying safe and, and are healthy and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.